Today we shall explore one of the fascinating regions of the brain, the hypothalamus. In this part, we shall study physiological anatomy of the hypothalamus, classification of various nuclei and its intricate connections. In the next part, we shall study functions and clinical aspects related to hypothalamus. So let us start with the physiological anatomy of hypothalamus. Hypothalamus occupies only 4 cubic centimeter volume of the neural tissue which accounts for just 0.3% of the total brain. As you can note, the small blue color shaded area represents hypothalamus. Even though it is a minute region, hypothalamus plays vital role in regulation of various body systems. First let us understand the anatomical location of the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is a diencephalic structure situated just below the thalamus. It forms inferior part of the lateral walls as well as the floor of the third ventricle. This hypothalamus is basically a cluster of several nuclear masses extending from optic chiasma anteriorly to the mammillary bodies posteriorly. As you can observe in this view of the brain, this view is inferior aspect of the brain. This is optic chiasma and these are the mammillary bodies. And the hypothalamus occupies the region between these two structures on the superior aspect. You can also note and appreciate the pituitary stalk just posterior to the optic chiasma. Pituitary gland has been removed and hence not visible. Due to the functional similarities, Pre-optic nucleus which lies anterior to the optic chiasma is also included in hypothalamus. Now let's have a look at various nuclei of hypothalamus. Here is a diagrammatic representation of anteroposterior view or the part of the brain and you are viewing the medial aspect. So anteriorly we have optic chiasma, next to it is pituitary gland and posteriorly this elevation represents mammillary body. Hypothalamus is occupying superior part of the structures. For the sake of understanding, various hypothalamic nuclei are divided into four areas or groups. The anterior most area is preoptic area and it includes only one nucleus that is preoptic nucleus. The name itself suggests that this nucleus lies anterior to optic chiasma. Next to preoptic area is supraoptic area or anterior group. This group includes four nuclei namely supraoptic nucleus, suprachiasmatic nucleus, anterior nucleus and paraventricular nucleus. From their names you can easily imagine their locations. Supraoptic as well as suprachiasmatic nucleus occupies the region superior to the optic chiasma and supraoptic nucleus is a bit lateral. Above these two is the anterior nucleus and on the top of the anterior nucleus is paraventricular nucleus. Paraventricular nucleus lies by the side of third ventricle and hence the name paraventricular nucleus. Next region is tuberal area or middle group. Important nuclei in this region are arcuate nucleus, ventromedial nucleus and dorsomedial nucleus. Arcuate nucleus forms an arc around the median eminence and hence the name. Both ventromedial and dorsomedial nuclei are present on the medial side the one which is anterior is called as ventromedial and the other is posteromedial. Tuberal area also includes lateral nucleus. As it is lateral in position, it is not visible in this view which represents medial aspect and hence not shown in this picture. The last nuclear group is posterior group or mammillary area which includes mammillary body and posterior nucleus. Some authors divide hypothalamic nuclei into medial zone and lateral zone. The landmark for this division is fornix. Fornix is nothing but 
bundle of nerve fibers connecting hippocampus, septal nuclei and mammillary bodies. So the, here is the coronal section of the brain. This is thalamus and a third ventricle and here is the fornix. Nuclei of hypothalamus lateral to the fornix are included in lateral zone. This zone has lateral nucleus and tuberomammillary nucleus. The region between fornix and the third ventricle forms medial zone and it includes all the remaining nuclei of hypothalamus. Few of the medial zone nuclei are shown here. You can appreciate the location of paraventricular nucleus on either side of the third ventricle. I hope now you are well versed with the various nuclei of hypothalamus. So let us begin with the connections of hypothalamus. Understanding connections of any part of the nervous system is essential to understand its functions as well as its clinical aspects. Let's begin with the connections of hypothalamus. Hypothalamus has extensive connections with limbic system, reticular formation and autonomic centers in brainstem and spinal cord. It also receives variety of inputs from blood as well as CSF that is cerebrospinal fluid and its outputs are also mediated via all these three routes that is neural, via blood as well as CSF. Hence, hypothalamus is referred as major integrating center of the brain. These connections are vast and complex and hence we shall concentrate only on the important connections. Neural connections of hypothalamus with forebrain are reciprocal and forms major fiber systems namely fornix, stia terminalis and ventral amygdalofugal fibers. Fornix is the bundle of nerve fibers connecting hippocampus and mammillary bodies. So here are hippocampi of both sides and these are the mammillary bodies of both sides. Blue color band represents the fornix and this is the commissure of fornix. The second prominent fiber system is stria terminalis. It includes the reciprocal connections between amygdala and hypothalamus. In this picture, stria terminalis is shown in red color. As you can note, it forms a longer and less direct pathway. The third fiber system of the hypothalamus is ventral amygdalofugal fibers, which are shown in green color. Unlike stria terminalis, they form more direct connections and possess a greater number of myelinated nerve fibers. These fibers also connect different regions of amygdala to thalamus, hypothalamus, septal nuclei and forebrain. Let's study some important connections in terms of afferents and efferents. Hypothalamus receives collateral from medial, spinal and trigeminal lemnisci. It also receives signals from nucleus of tractus solitarius and radicular formation. All these afferents are collectively termed as somatic and visceral afferents. These afferents transmit various sensory inputs to hypothalamus. Fibers from optic tract, especially the fibers arising from photosensitive ganglion cells, convey visual signals to suprachiasmatic nucleus of hypothalamus. These fibers form retinohypothalamic tract. Hypothalamus also receives olfactory fibers through medial forebrain bundle. Thus, hypothalamus not only processes general sensations but also special sensations. Afferents from frontal lobe of the cortex form corticohypothalamic fibers. Then as we have seen before, afferents from hippocampus travel through fornix and terminate in mammillary body, while the afferents from amygdala form stria terminalis. And the last, hypothalamus receives afferents from dorsomedial and midline nuclei of thalamus and also from tegmentum of midbrain. Now let's study efferents of hypothalamus. Efferent fibers from anterior nucleus of hypothalamus terminate on parasympathetic neurons and from posterior nucleus 
on sympathetic neurons in brain stem and spinal cord via reticular formation thus hypothalamus regulates the activity of autonomic nervous system next important efferent is mammalothalamic tract which is an important component of papes circuit as name suggests these fibers transmit signals from mammillary bodies to anterior nucleus of thalamus mammillary body also gives efferent to tegmentum of midbrain and these fibers form mammillo tegmental tract efferents from hypothalamus are also given to various components of the limbic system fibers arising from supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei terminate in posterior pituitary and form hypothalamo hypophyseal tract these terminals release neurohormones vasopressin and oxytocin efferents from tuberal area especially from arcuate nucleus terminate in median eminence they secrete several releasing and inhibitory hormones to regulate anterior pituitary secretions via hypothalamo hypophyseal portal system with this let's find up the session and in the next part we shall study functions and clinical aspects related to hypothalamus thank you for tuning in and if you are new to my channel please subscribe it and press the bell icon to stay updated about the latest contents do share the video with your friends and colleagues and give it a thumbs up if you liked it until next time stay curious stay inspired and i'll catch you in the next video once again thank you for watching